Hello again. We're still in week one. We're now on to the second lecture, or lecture 1B, and we're going to start looking at actual utility billing electrical. Electrical utility companies, uh, what their function in life is, is they have to provide three main services. On the supply side, they have to provide generation of electricity, and they have to provide transmission, transmission being over long distances, typically really high voltage, lower amperage. On the delivery side, in other words, locally, they drop the voltage down, increase the amperage, and they're responsible for distribution. So the three main services the electrical utility companies have to do are generate, transmit, and distribute. Now, a utility billing structure, in other words, whatever electrical rate you're on, is also known as an electrical tariff. Most utility companies have a number of different tariffs for different customer situations, depending on whether uh, customers are large or small, whether they manufacture something or they're simply commercial. But most electrical utility companies will have a number of different tariffs, uh, which a customer probably can apply for or would qualify for. Now, even though there can be 20 or more different electrical tariffs, they typically fall into one of three different types. Now, over the next handful of lectures, we're going to talk about these three major types of electrical tariffs. These three tariffs, given generic names, would be a consumption-based tariff. This is the first or initial level tariff and it's used both at a residential level. This would be the type of tariff that you're under uh, for your own home. Or it's also applied to small commercial and industrial uh, utilization. Um, think of possibly a local strip mall, a very small single um, commercial or industrial building. But again, think small. The next tier of electrical utility rate is called a hybrid rate. Think medium-sized commercial or industrial buildings. And then finally, we have something called a demand-based tariff or utility rate. Think large commercial and or industrial building. Now, you'll notice that I'm using the term commercial or industrial there is a subtle difference between these two. An industrial building, at least as far as electrical rates are concerned, or actually energy rates, means that the building makes something. So an industrial rate means that the company actually makes something. Commercial rate means that they don't make something. So again, industrial, something is being made or produced, commercial, um, they're not making anything. Now, we're going to take a look at a consumption-based electrical tariff first. There's five main billing areas in this tariff. So, no matter what you do or where you go, there's typically these five main areas of billing within a consumption-based electrical rate. The first one is customer or access charge. The second one is an energy charge, and as you remember before, energy are those four equivalent terms to KWH, electrical usage, and consumption. There's a cost recovery factor, followed by surcharges, and then possibly state sales tax. Let's look at the customer charge first. This charge covers the cost of administration of the account, uh, including the monthly meter reading. The charge itself is a flat monthly rate. 
In other words, it has nothing to do with how much electricity you use. You're going to get this charge whether you use any electricity or not. So it's a flat rate covering the administration of the account and meter reading. You should also know that this would be the minimal charge that you'll ever have for a month. So you could completely disconnect everything in your building and unless you disconnect or call the company and actually disconnect the meter and cancel this account uh, associated with this meter, you're going to get this charge. The next one, or the major component within uh, a consumption-based tariff, is the energy charge. This is the cost per kWh and it covers both the supply uh, side and the distribution side um, of the energy charges. Now again, on the supply side, this is covering the cost of generation and transmitting, and on the distribution side, it's covering the actual cost of getting the electricity to your building. This is based on a cost per kWh, so the more electricity you use, the more you pay for. Cost recovery factor. This is also a cost based on how much electricity you use, or a cost per kWh. Now the unique thing about this charge is it can be either a credit or a debit, so it can either add a bigger amount to your utility bill or it can make your utility bill less. What they're doing with this bill or charge is it's an adjustment made to the monthly electrical bill to reflect changes in the cost of fuel that the utility company itself pays to generate uh, the electricity. So when the original tariffs are written, the utility company has to predict what they're going to have to pay for for whatever fuel they're using to generate electricity, whether it's coal or natural gas, whatever. Now we all know that, that utility costs change rapidly. Uh, just look at the gas pump when you drive by. It can vary from week to week. So the utility company is given the opportunity to make adjustments, subtle adjustments, to the fuel costs that they have to pay for to generate their own electricity. And again, this can be a credit or debit, and it's based also on the more you use, the more you pay. The fourth thing found in a consumption-based bill is a surcharge. These are also costs per kWh. These are added costs that a utility company uh, has to pass along to a consumer. This may include everything for added security for the plant, uh, decommissioning of certain types of plants, like nuclear plants, when they go through a decommissioning process, major plant overhauls, uh, major plant conversions, bad investments, uh, storm coverage, if you have uh, damage after a hurricane, damage after an ice storm. These are all added costs that are allowed by uh, governing bodies for utility companies to charge extra above and beyond the normal uh, generation, transmission, and distribution of electricity. And then finally, state sales tax. This is going to be a percent based on the subtotal of the other charges. Each state has a different sales uh, and use tax. Some customers have exemption to sales tax or are either wholly or partially exempt uh, on state sales tax. Examples of full exemption from state sales tax would be any level of government. Other full exemption organizations would be any organization that's not for profit such as the American Red Cross, for example. Any religious organization would be a not-for-profit organization and are exempt from state sales tax. Now, from a partial exemption standpoint, manufacturing plants 
which we already talked about would be qualified as industrial. Um, these type of plants don't have to pay sales tax on any, any energy directly used for manufacturing. So they have a partial exemption. They have to pay sales tax on any energy used for non-manufacturing purposes, such as offices, bathrooms, corridors, etc. cetera. Uh, they don't have to pay sales tax on any energy used in the manufacturing process. Now, this is not out of the kindness of the heart of the state. It's simply the state charges the sales tax on the finished product. So you as a customer, when you go out and purchase a car, you pay sales tax on the finished product. That means the uh, industrial plant making the product doesn't have to pay sales tax on the individual um, production of that material. Sales tax is paid in the end. Now what I'd like you to do is in the back of your lecture notes, you have a sample of a consumption bill. What we're going to do is we're going to walk through this. If you look at this consumption-based bill, what we're going to do is we're going to carefully walk from top to bottom of the bill and look at some of the key features. The first thing up at the top, you should see that we have a company name and a service address. You should always make sure when you're going through a number of bills that these all line up. A lot of companies have different buildings with different addresses. You shouldn't confuse one building's utility bill with another. Make sure they line up. The next thing next to it, typically there's an account number. Make sure the, all the account numbers line up for the utility bills that you're looking at. Underneath the account information is something called the billing period. This billing period will be a range of dates. The start of the billing period, the end of the billing period. Now you notice this particular bill went from February 26th to March 26th. So the bulk of the days were in March. This would be considered the March utility bill. It covered 29 days of billing and the utility company gives a due date for when they want to see payment for that bill. Moving down, this is a real crucial line. This line is the utility rate. This is the tariff that this customer is under. It's typically got a number. So this is rate 1210, and then it's got a description of the rate. This is crucial. This is an electrical general primary rate. It's got some number letters, GP, and finally it's got IND. This IND at the end stands for industrial. So not knowing anything about the building, we can make an initial assumption that the building manufactures something. If it doesn't, we found a mistake. If this is simply a commercial building, they may be on the wrong rate. Industrial, again, makes the assumption that the building manufactures something. Now, if we back up, you'll notice that this is a primary rate. PRI stands for primary. This is either going to say primary or secondary, SEC. What a primary rate is, is the customer, in order to get a lower cost on electrical, decides to take on the responsibility of owning the final transformer going into their building. So if a customer wants to lower their electrical rate or go to what's called a primary rate, they own the responsibility of the final transformer. So if somebody hits that transformer with a forklift, a squirrel goes in it and gets toasted, takes up the transformer, the repair, replacement, and cost of the transformer comes out of the customer's pocket. On a secondary rate, the customer does not own the final transformer. It's the responsibility of the utility company but the customer pays a little more uh, on every monthly bill 
to cover that cost of the final transformer. So again, this customer is a primary rate, so they decided to own their final transformer, and they're industrial. They must make something. There is a little more information on here. Sometimes the utility company will give you some historical information. It may not actually be billed for. It's sort of nice to know information. Sliding down, here's the meter number. This meter number should match the meter number out on the meter. It gives a location of the meter. It's typically an address. It might be a, a detailed description of where the meter is located. Finally, by a beginning meter read, an end meter read, and then right here, what type of reading it was. ACT stands for actual. The meter was actually read. This is compared to if the meter was estimated. That would be EST. The rest of it is a, the rest of the information here is a conversion factor of the meter read to convert it into actual consumption or electrical use. So at the very right hand side of the uh, description here, this particular customer used 7,200 kWh per month. So that's the consumption or kWh or energy use, electrical use, for the month. Now, we have some account information. In other words, what happened in the previous month. But if we slide down to what's happening in the current month, the current month, like we described before, is divided into supply side charges and delivery charges. So supply side charges would cover generation and transmission. Delivery charges covers distribution. Now, a side note before we get actually into the line items. It's important to know that all these line items are printed out um, due to the fact that a number of years ago, electrical billing came under deregulation. Deregulation allowed customers to go out and actually purchase electricity from somebody else and actually have it delivered by their local um, utility provider. If that was the case, um, this utility bill would only either have supply or delivery. The company potentially would have two different utility bills. If they were purchasing the generation transmission or supply from one uh, provider, they would have one utility bill that would simply have the supply charges. They would have another bill that would have delivery charges. Because this customer has everything all on one utility bill, they're not using the deregulating part of this. Now, that deregulation was considered Retail Open Access, ROA. Retail Open Access. If you were a Retail Open Access customer, you were taking advantage of being able to purchase from one provider and then getting your local utility company to be the delivery. If this customer truly was a Retail Open Access they would simply have one bill or the other. They wouldn't have it all on one page. So this particular customer is not taking advantage of retail open access. Now, because all these are line itemed out, this is known as an unbundled bill. In other words, they, they separated all the charges out by line item. Most of the utility companies in the country are deregulated and their utility bills are unbundled. If there happens to be an area that um, is still not under deregulation, then they don't have to put line items for every charge. 
that would be known as a bundled bill. It may have just a single line item that you have to pay a certain amount. So this bill is not a retail open access because both supply and uh, delivery charges are on one bill and it's an unbundled bill. Every charge is line itemed. Now, if you remember, we talked about five different billing charges that are in a consumption bill. First of all, how do I know it's a consumption bill? All I have to do is look at these units in this column. Every unit is KWH. So KWH, KWH, everything KWH. The only level bill that has only KWH is a pure consumption based bill. Now, it should have the five categories that we talked about. So somewhere on here, there should be a customer charge. Well, if you look on this, there's something called a system access charge. It's not based on the quantity of energy used. It's just got a, a flat rate. So this customer charge on this bill is known as a system access charge is $25 a month. This would be the minimal charge that the customer is going to get billed no matter what. Now let's take a look at energy charges. Under the supply side charge, we have kilowatt hour charge for energy. They use 7,200 kWh per month at 0.043882 for the month per kWh and under the distribution or delivery side we have the energy charge for distribution. So the energy charge is split into two, the part for generation transmission and the part for distribution, another 0.025 cents. So that takes care of the first two categories, customer charge, and energy charge. The third charge is a cost recovery factor. If you look on, up under here under supply charges, we have a power supply cost recovery. This is the cost recovery factor. This is the, either the added amount or subtracted amount based on uh, variations in fuel prices meant for the generation of their own electricity. In this case, it's an add-on so they must have paid more for their energy during this month than they predicted. Otherwise, there'd be a negative sign in front of this. So that's bill or charge three. Charge number four are surcharges. Well, starting with this, security recovery factor, regulatory asset recovery, securitization charge, securitization tax charge, all four of these line items would be considered surcharges. They all add to the price of the utility bill. Now, some months can have one or two, some months can have maybe two pages worth of surcharges. These have a tendency to vary from month to month, but they are added to the cost of the overall cost of electricity. Finally, we get a total electrical cost. This is the subtotal. This is the pre-tax amount. Now, this is a state of Michigan utility bill. State of Michigan has 6% sales tax. They would normally take this value, multiply by 6% to get the tax. Now, we noticed earlier, if we go up to the top, that the utility rate that this company was on was considered industrial. That means they must make something. If they make something, manufacturing is one of those few companies that can have a partial tax exemption. They don't have to pay state sales tax on energy directly used for manufacturing. So this value right here, if it's not 100% of that 6% here means they're partially exempt. Now later on when we look at this closer, we're going to actually take in and measure that for real. But for the time being, we have a sales tax added to this 
to give us the total amount that this company has to pay uh, for the month. So this concludes our look at a, a consumption-based bill. This ends Lecture 1B. This also ends the lectures for Week 1. There's no other lectures uh, for Week 1. You now can proceed to Assessment Number 1. Now remember, there will be another lecture, but it has to do with Lab. So you will be getting a lecture for Lab 1. Uh, that's it. Again, proceed to Assessment 1.